And I said, if your mother raises you to expect that from women, it's hardly surprising that when they're adult, they then go on to have these these toxic attitudes. Absolutely. How many what in India is it is there a problem or I say a problem is there a large selection of um, uh, single mothers or is it traditionally a family? So tradition is used to be joint families. Then came the concept of nuclear families. And right now there are a lot of single parents they are largely single mothers because of precisely the issues that you mentioned so they try and compromise for a lot of times and when then things just get out of hand they have to move on most of the times for the welfare of the children for their safety yeah so that would happen so the kind of behavior right so we know that the root of solving this problem is systemic it's like systemic racism in the UK with the police or in the US with the police. Um, in fact, I would suggest that many problems in society are systemic problems that although individuals such as yourself help, it's always after the fact. And what we really want to see is changes that happen before people grow up and make these bad choices. So, given that about 70% of women in these workplaces where they are uh, educated and, and have responsibility and authority and yet they still don't reach out, what kinds of behaviours, how does it start? So, I can think of things I've seen which are very obviously sexual harassment, stroke assault, but how was the minimum that it stopped when should when should a woman go mm, that's an alarm bell okay so i think the act makes it very clear what sexual harassment is and it defines anything that the woman finds offensive mm -hmm. and is uh, unwelcome so unwelcome is something she does not like and is essentially sexual in nature so it can be something you know as subtle as someone cracking an indecent joke so there might be 10 people there Eight of them laugh about it, including women. But there is one woman who does not like it because she found it of sexual nature and is offensive. She can file a complaint. So it is as simple as that. It is sexual content. Someone sends you a video which has sexual content. It yep. has pornography. And then you can file a complaint. We have had cases where, you know, on WhatsApp is so frequently used these days. So there were snapshots where certain women sent it to us when men had sent certain lewd messages to them or used so-called those emojis, which, you know, these, uh, these children throw out so carelessly. And that has been the reason that a lot of people were asked to leave the organization because this is not acceptable. And when we had the COVID, we had the lockdown there, a lot of such cases increased because virtual sexual harassment is a reality. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, it's so easy to hide behind the camera or the phone and, you know, keep sending these messages because you're not even facing that woman and making things difficult for her. So these cases have increased so much. And at the same time, because there is so much of evidence available, the woman can easily file a case if this is what is happening. And yeah. action is taken up instantly in these cases, because you can just, you know, it's an open and shut case. You can just mm -hmm. show what happened and you find it a sexual in nature, you can take action. So women in organizations of more than 10 staff, um, or people who businesses of more than 10 staff have to have a internal complaints procedure and mm. generally speaking we're saying that women who are able to work are stronger than the ones who are forced into child marriages and are forced into a domesticated life um, and are too afraid generally because the abuse in society so Anything that a woman finds unpleasant or sexual in nature is um, is a fairly wide description. What? So, one of the things we discussed on on social me too is the fact that people will send a DM or a connection request in LinkedIn, or yes. I suppose in Facebook, but then yes. they really so the people that put that commit these crimes online they really want to get the whatsapp number 
So mm-hmm. they'll go, oh yeah, what's your WhatsApp number? And now I don't, I don't even know what my phone is. I don't even have a smartphone. So I don't have WhatsApp. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so it's not a problem. Is being asked for your, because your WhatsApp number is your mobile number. Is that something in and of itself that's uncomfortable or... So see, you know what I have also observed this LinkedIn is now becoming more of a Facebook in the form that you receive a lot of unwanted friendship requests and on LinkedIn it is easier to accept considering it is a professional platform. Having said that, a lot of women face abuse in the form of where people would say, I really, li- I would really like to hear your voice. I, can I have your number? Yeah. So, you know, once just asking the number is one thing, adding on these details kind of adds it to the connotation of sexual harassment. So just if someone has asked you for your number and you either don't share your number or don't reply, so it ends there. So that cannot be specifically clubbed under the case of sexual harassment. Mm. But if the person continues to keep pestering you, sending you any kind of messages which have sexual orientation, again it would come into the category of uh, sexual harassment that would happen there one of the uh, ladies that was, uh, in fact, her name's Gazelle. She was one of our first guests on, on social me too. Um, we did a recording and she said, I mean, she's such a lovely woman and, and laughy and bubbly and what have you, but she's telling these stories, which are horrific. Um, and she said she got sent a couple of videos that made her cry because they were so pornographic so the fact that you have the evidence is is obviously now i mean i don't know what these people are thinking well maybe i do know what they're thinking they're just thinking i won't get caught they can't find me there's too many people doing this there isn't enough police resources you know the the perpetrators will tell themselves any sort of story so advice we've said before is if you get a connection request in LinkedIn don't give them your WhatsApp number until you've established a business relationship so I think zooming is okay because most people have an email address but it's even the case that some business women business owners might want to have a separate email for their business work okay. and a sort of holding email which keeps people separate from your main business until you've established this relationship what's okay. your view on that yes i think it definitely makes sense that you know you should try and understand what the person is looking into like if someone would ask a number so you can always ask what i uh, is there a way i can support you in our in a professional relationship or is there any kind of services you're looking at so once you put that across, generally men stop reverting. So anyone who's not interested in work, he would stop reverting. So you get a very good hands-on idea that this person is not talking about work. Now, second thing is that if a person really wants to get associated, then we can always have a Zoom call. Like you mentioned, we can have a video call, discuss things. Having separate email IDs also help. Having said that, once you have shared your email ID, you still feel it is not okay to go ahead and converse this person or or if that person is still pestering you, you can always block that email ID. So I think there are a lot of preventions in place. And there's also Cyber Security uh, Act here, which also protects us in case something of this is happening, you can always go ahead and file a complaint there as well. 